Hello everybody, it's Chris at AMS, I hope you're all well. Uh, I'd just like to share a, a job I'm doing at the moment. It is on a Renault Clio 2, uh, 2006 plate. Customer's complaint is the vehicle doesn't start. Uh, so, I've arrived at the vehicle, the engine will crank over, but it doesn't fire. Uh, there are a couple of fault codes in the engine management system. Uh, both listing to was it an ECU power supply problem and a circuit actuator relay control circuit problem. Uh, both of these obviously don't tell you exactly what the problem is. I would never ever use the diagnostic equipment to and change parts without doing tests to actual components. Uh, so we've come in and we've started doing some actual testing on the vehicle. So as you can see here. So the first step I did carry out in my diagnostics is I checked for the power supply to the ECU. So the ECU has two, uh, two stroke three power supplies. One is an ignition live. Uh, that was okay on ignition on, I was getting battery voltage. One is a permanent power supply. That was getting battery voltage. And the third one up here, which is this, this is probed into, uh, so the battery voltage was about 12.4 volts. Up here, this was 10.3 volts. So that's, that's an abnormal voltage for this vehicle. That's not right. So we know we've got an issue somewhere there. So what I did then is I came out of here and we took a look at the wiring diagram. So whenever doing any diagnostics, I always use the proper wiring diagrams and make sure that I'm getting you know, the correct information. Information is key. If you just look to a bundle of cables, you don't know what they do, but this at least maps it out for me and tells me what I need to do. So I am now, so the problem wire or the problem voltage was on pin 66 of the ECU here. And that is fed by the main engine control relay. Uh, the main engine control relay sits in this little box here, down here. Now from the bottom of the relay I, was, I found that I was only getting 10.3 volts as well. Um, the possibility of that is that one of the components on the circuit is shorting out. So here I have an EVAP valve uh, which I've disconnected. Uh, the fuel injectors for the vehicle which I've also disconnected. And it also powers, gives you a power supply for the two lambda sensors, oxygen sensors on the vehicle, which are also disconnected. So that proves in that respect that none of the components are shorted internally and causing it to draw too much power and kill the circuit. Uh, given what they class, or a lot of people class as a wiggle test, I was checking the wiring harness between uh, the fuse box and the ECU because there's not much else it could be so we're left with a wiring issue um, and down here so we've got the, the vehicle battery we've got this big ass metal tray that sits around it and then underneath so out of the component runs down here into the big harness and then out to all the components around the engine so if we look here hopefully you can see that from that from here yeah that looks good these are the power supplies and this wire here has gone all fat and green and crusty and when I chop that back I will find let me see if I can do that with you watching actually yeah, that's quite cool. so we do that whilst you're watching there like that and if I open this wire up I am going to find that it is all corroded and horrible and rotten and green and crap inside Yes, look at that. See? So see all this cor corrosion and rot? This is basically causing a high resistance in the circuit. And that is stopping the power supplies getting to where they need to. Um, lucky for this customer, this is going to be a nice, easy repair. So we're just going to chop this bit of harness out uh, and replace it with a fresh bit of wire. Nicely soldered in, heat shrunk in and made sure that there's nowhere it can chafe or get any wet or corrosion in it. Uh, once that's done, the vehicle should start and it should all be absolutely fine to drive again. Um, 
I can't stress enough the importance of following a diagnostic method and the process in what you do. Um, like I say, this has probably taken less than, well, approximately an hour or so in order to find the problem, just by tracing by a, a proper method. I don't throw parts at vehicles unless I know they need them. I test first. If it needs a part, then put it on. Lots of people just throw parts at cars and spend three or four or five hundred pound on parts and then no further forward because it's easy, like I say, to have problems like this that will really spoil the day if you just spend 500 quid and you find out it's a bit of wire. Um, I hope you found this video informative. Uh, please like and share this on Facebook, that would be lovely. Um, and look out for other videos and stuff in the future. Cool. I'm Chris from AAS. Have a good day.